do I need an umbrella policy? Well, if you have uttered those words and asked that question, then you, my friend, have entered into that life phase that we like to call adulthood. Yes, umbrella policies are one of the least understood policies in all of insurance and also one of the least valued policies by a long shot. And one of the main reasons is this question that we get almost every single day. You know, Jack, I'm not rich. Do I still need an umbrella policy? Well, today we're going to answer that question and give you a couple of examples of where an umbrella policy would come in handy. We'll take a look at all of that on today's video. Hey folks, Jack Wingate here. And one question we get all of the time sounds something like this. You know, I'm not wealthy, I'm not rich, I don't have a lot of assets. Do I still need an umbrella policy? And the answer is yes. You see, the one asset that most people forget about is their ability to earn a paycheck. And if you don't have assets that someone can go after, and you don't have proper liability protection that someone can get in case of an accident or a lawsuit, then the next thing down that can be um, gotten to fulfill the judgment is your wages. And we do that through what's called wage garnishment. And in North Carolina, the government can go after up to 25% of your wages on behalf of the plaintiff in that lawsuit. And that continues until the entire settlement is taken care of. So, would you rather have 25% of your paycheck taken every pay period? Would you rather pay 100 to 200 bucks a year, whatever it is, to have a properly structured umbrella policy? I'm gonna opt for the 100 to 200 bucks a year every single time. So then the next thing you think is, what are some common examples? I mean, do, do, do these things really happen? Do people really get lawsuits where they exhaust all of their insurance limits to where they would even need an umbrella? And the answer is yes. And the first thing we're going to look at is, this, is legal and defense costs. Just think about it. You get into an accident. You have regular old liability limits, um, which in North Carolina, actually, this will, these will be actually high limits for most people of $100,000 per person, $300,000 per accident for bodily injury. So let's say you're driving down the road, you get in an accident, you T-bone someone, there's two people in the car, both of them have to be life flighted to the hospital. They're in the hospital a few days, broken bones, what have you. You've got medical bills, you've got lost wages for that person or those two people. And very quickly, that $100,000 for each of those people will be exhausted. And once those limits are capped out, then you have no other recourse in that lawsuit and in that settlement than to start having your wages garnished unless you have an umbrella policy. So a properly structured umbrella policy on top of your auto limits will put you in a position where you're not having to pay out of pocket for those legal and defense costs. Second situation, do you have a teen driver in your house? Know someone that does? Well, more than likely, as soon as you add that teen driver, the horror stories happen of, man, my insurance went up ridiculous. Well, there's a reason for that. Teen drivers on average get into 70% more accidents than the normal driver. So if you have more risk, meaning the higher likelihood that, that your teen driver is going to get in an accident, that means the greater the likelihood that you're going to get sued. And when you get sued, it's going to be for a lot. So the same situation, once those 
liability limits are exhausted on that auto policy, the rest of it's coming out of your pocket, i.e. through wage garnishment. So if you have a teen driver, make sure to pay that extra amount of money to get that properly structured umbrella policy. Now, let's say that you have a dog. The number one liability claim for all homeowners policies are dog bites. And we did an article on dog bites ah, a while back, and I'll link it down in the description to where you can read about that. But dog bites are expensive. You have the medical expenses, you have rehab a lot of times. I mean, for goodness sake, I just watched a news story the other day where a dog broke a chain and ate someone's face off. I mean, they ate their face off. How much does that cost? The normal homeowner's insurance carries a liability of around 300,000. That's what we see the majority of the time. And yes, you can go up to a million dollars on the homeowner's policy, which you should look at doing for maybe an extra you know, 10, 20 bucks a year, but most people don't. And if that $300,000, if you've got $300,000 and you've got a person that has their face that's been bitten off, you're going to have your wages garnished for a long time unless you have a personal umbrella policy. There are a thousand different examples of where an umbrella policy would come in handy. And I suggest that you reach out to your agent. Um, if you don't have an, an agent or an advisor that you trust, I suggest reaching out to a local independent agent. Obviously, you can always contact us here at All Choice, but ask them about an umbrella policy. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at the amount of coverage you get for the minimum amount of premium that you have to pay. And until next time, I'm Jack Wingate, and we'll see you later.